One area of potential confusion with Mocha is how it handles motion blur in combination with After Effects, because the way it does it with motion tracking data is different than the way it does it with shape data. Now here's the example we played around with earlier, where I tracked a section of this wall and wanted to put something fresh on that wall in After Effects, and of course try to match the motion blur the best I could. To do that, I selected my layer with the tracking data, did export, again this menu is going to change probably in the final shipping version, but basically I picked the version and said After Effects corner pin supports motion blur. This adds positional data in addition to the corner pin data to allow me to get motion blur in After Effects. And there's other options if you're using Red Giant's Warp plugin or if you're using the excellent Mocha import script. But I've got just bare bones After Effects, so I'll select that, copy to clipboard, and you already saw back in After Effects that if I wanted motion blur on my special graffiti that I've added to this wall, that little brown shape back there, is I just need to enable motion blur for that layer. There's the sharp original shot. Doesn't look very realistic when things are flying by. There it is with motion blur enabled. Fits into the scene much better. That's what to do for tracking data. Shape data is different. We'll go back to Mocha. If you've been watching the tutorials on Imagineer's website, you might have seen a tutorial for the standalone version of Mocha that has a dedicated motion blur parameter. Enabling this parameter allows it to render mats which have blurred edges. However, Mocha with After Effects does not render mats. Instead, you export shape layers. So you don't pay any attention to that parameter. Instead, you need to do a little bit of playing around with the shape data. So I'm gonna take my shape here, instead of making it a motion track, just for fun, let's use the shape data to create our track mat. I'll export, selected layer, copy to clipboard. Switch to After Effects, get rid of my wall edition for now, don't need it. Pick my original shot, make sure my time indicator is back at the start of the clip, or at least where I started my motion track, then paste. And now I've got Mocha shape data just for that wall segment. Now you might have noticed that it does not have blurred edges, and even enabling motion blur for the layer with Mocha shape is not going to add a blur to it. You need to do a trick, and this is a universal trick which applies to anything you want to add motion blur to in After Effects, including footage that already rendered, say, from a 3D program. I turn off for now, and I want to pre-compose this layer. I want to have the shape data with its motion in its own pre-comp so it looks like a fresh piece of footage to After Effects. Layer, pre-compose, I'll call it Mocha Shape Pre-Comp. I'm going to move all attributes back, which means also move my Mocha Shape effect, and there's no need to open the new comp. I'll stay where I am. Click OK. There we go. Now, to add motion blur to any footage or pre-comp layer in After Effects, pick Effect, Time, Time Warp. Set just a couple parameters here. You got to set the speed to 100 or 100%. You need to enable motion blur, so turn that on, and set the shutter control to manual rather than automatic. Now I can say, hey, have 180 degrees of motion blur, a typical filmic motion blur for this layer. And now I've got motion blur on my shape layer before, after. Very cool addition, particularly if I just had a white track mat here that I'm gonna to use to mat out another layer. If I zoom in on this and look closely at these edges, you'll notice that there is some ghosting or stuttering of these edges. All you need to do is increase the shutter samples to make this look better. I recommend at least eight samples. And if that's not smooth enough, go all the way up to 16. And now you've got a really smooth edge. It takes longer to render, but it's worth it. And just to give you an idea of how that looks like on a normal mat, I'll select my comp panel, tap shift key, go back to my Mocha pre-comp. Let's just look at this as a color composite. It's just that white shape. Tap shift. Go back to my original comp here. Give it a moment to render. And there is my beautiful blurred mat. Without motion blur trick, just sharp edge with the default number of samples. OK, 
kind of stuttery, not very good edge. Trading off some render time, maybe 12 samples. Beautiful, smooth, matte edge that I can now apply on top of other footage and blend it into my original scene. So that's how you add motion blur when you're working with Mocha. But this trick with time warp, it's universal. You can use it in other things, such as 3D renders that don't have motion blur.